Well, I went and did it again. Two more vintage computers have turned up at home here. These are um, a couple computers of about 10 or so that were brought in to work. And uh, yeah, they're all old computers. These two are the oldest of the bunch. There's quite a few um, socket 939, 754 systems. Uh, some of which look absolutely brand new on the inside. There's no speck of dust or anything on the fans. But uh, I might talk about those computers in another video. Uh, these are both K6 systems. Uh, they both, I think, are 200 megahertz. The one is for sure. The other one I don't know about because, well, that one doesn't work. These computers, a lot of them, I don't know if they got left outside or if they were in a garage or what happened to them, but um, I was tasked with the um, fun job of pulling off emails, which there were none on any of these computers, as I found out. Uh, the lady that brought these off, she's a client of ours, and uh, she, interestingly enough, she's actually 100% Linux in her office, which has been kind of interesting to deal with, but uh, I will have to say that uh, she's also been the, the uh, least uh, annoying <laughs> as far as uh, calling up and, you know, having little issues every day or, you know, virus problems, things like that. She's been relatively... Uh, I haven't really had any problems with those systems, just an occasional, you know, I can't play a DVD or something like that, and that's because, well, there's no DVD players in those computers. I didn't build them, another guy did, and he's the one that uh, sold them on the idea of Linux, and that's what they've been running for years, and we just took over the account. But anyway, um, these were a couple computers I decided to save. I don't know if I'm going to actually keep both of them. Um, one of them might get parted out. But uh, this one over here, this is an N-Lite case, and uh, it's in relatively good condition on the exterior. I've actually cleaned it up quite a bit. Um, I took the screws off all of them. You can see this one here, an example of some of the rust on these cases from being out in moisture. And this one is no exception to that. Uh, this one's actually pretty nasty on the inside, but you'll get to see that in a minute. Uh, the screws, I took them all off because they were all rusted, and uh, they weren't worth saving, obviously. I've got plenty of screws, but this is a really nice end light case. I really like these old end light cases. They were one of the top, top the line cases. They were really well built, and they looked good. So this one I'll definitely probably preserve. The other one, I, I don't know. I don't need two of these things, but it is a very well built case, and it looks kind of like that almost exactly like that ATX case that I've got that I originally put that uh, Pentium Pro uh, into the dual Pentium Pro it's got that same styling on it so um, this one's actually the one that doesn't work the end light one and <clears throat> I think it's salvageable but I'd have to replace the one of the capacitors on the motherboard but I don't know if there's enough light here but you can see the moisture damage on the back. You can see the VGA connector is pretty well rotted out. So those slot blanks there. But those are removable. Those are the original N light ones. So those that's not a big deal. I can remove those. You can see some of the, more of the rust damage on the screws themselves. But uh, <clears throat> this one's actually uh, had some mice in it at some point. The little boogers, this was all was opened up, but apparently they were small enough to get into the slots there. And they're kind of like Millers, you know, they can just kind of squeeze themselves into pretty much anything. Uh, I did power it on, uh, and I was standing quite a ways away from the computer, as far as I could go anyway, as far as I could reach the power button. <laughs> I had them plugged in, just in case that power supply on all of these, anyway, uh, decided to go boom from whatever environment they were in, dust and moisture and things like that. But they all turned on just fine, so thankfully that's good. Um, so let's uh, see if I can uh, get that side case off of this thing. This is a totally off-the-cuff video. 
and I had this thing off earlier just a few hours ago so it doesn't want to come off now. thing over and here's what we've got on the inside of it <clears throat> you can see more moisture damage there the inside and the motherboard's fairly good until you get to that capacitor right there and it's actually broken off the board it's bulged and it's actually loose too so that's going to have to be replaced. I'm sure that's why this thing's not actually uh, getting to post. It looks like an Amptron motherboard in this thing. And it's a TX Pro chipset. That's on here. It's got a uh, video card that I definitely want to save. S3 Trio 64V Plus. It's in here. Um, but yeah, everything else is pretty much standard. I don't know how much RAM it's got in it yet, because like I said, it won't actually get the post. So I don't know if these are 16 meg sticks, or 32 meg, or 8 meg, or 4 meg, or what they are, but it could be anything in this era. But you can see the rat piddles at the bottom of this case. Quite nasty, and there's actually a fair amount of rat shit in the bottom of this thing too, which I already vacuumed out when it was at work. You can see some of that dust and dirt just pile up back there. Um, <clears throat> but thankfully none of the wires got chewed, which is actually quite uh, quite interesting that the little mice weren't apparently interested in that wire, because they usually are. And they even ended up getting up here as well. Let's see that, and you know, that probably is squeamish to some, they're nasty to people that are squeamish about such things, but... You know, I had a hamster cage when I was young, so it doesn't bother me. <clears throat> That'll clean up pretty easily. 24x CD-ROM, and I don't remember if it ejected. I don't know if I don't remember if I tried or not. 200 watt power supply, pretty uh, typical for AT cases back then. And uh, you can see the the construction that uh, Nlight had. Of course, they had their own branded power supplies as well in these things, but they're really well constructed cases most of these AT cases were built pretty much the same you've got this removable hard drive tray right here which could go right there if you wanted one some cases came with that and uh... <clears throat> yeah it's not a whole lot to see I guess we could see what type of processors in this because I don't know I'm only guessing it's a K6 because that's what the sticker says on the front and I'd certainly hope that it is, because I would like to have some... Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. <clears throat> I was not expecting that, because that's not what's on the front of that case. Huh. Well, that's cool. I like that. I like that style of the Sark 686 processor. That logo that they've got printed on there. Yeah, that's cool. I was kind of looking looking at those, but yeah, 75 megahertz bus times two. So that means that's a 150 megahertz chip. Well, that's going to be a fun little chip to play with. That's cool. The other one I know for sure is a K6200 because I that one actually does boot up. Fairly nice little heat sink here too. Really nice easy clips to put on there. Alright, so. Nothing, a whole lot of interest to see in this thing. I won't be powering these up in this video. But um, this is just kind of a in-between that you guys might like to see another vintage system being rescued if nothing else it's going to get parted out because there is some good stuff in here um, there is no hard drive I don't think 
pretty sure it's just floppy and CD-ROM. The hard drive has gone missing. It probably was in that tray at one point, and it's not there anymore. <clears throat> but uh, that's obviously not a big deal at all. Because if you remember from that vintage computer mega haul series that I did, I've got plenty of hard drives. <laughs> Although some of those turned out not to work. And unfortunately that one... Uh, Oh, I can't remember what the brand of that one was, though. It's a one gigabyte drive, and that one, unfortunately, does not work. One that's made by uh, Atari Corporation. So here's the inside of this case. And it's a little bit flimsier of a sheet metal on this thing. <clears throat> Again, we've got another TX Pro chipset in this thing. We've got a SCSI controller, Daptec. This system is the one that works, by the way. Um, got a SCSI hard drive in this. I think it's a, I don't remember if it's a one gigabyte, somewhere around there. It is a Western Digital. Mm, can't really, there we go. Like, kind of focusing in on that. <clears throat> Fortron Source. If we're to believe the model number that claims to be a 230 watt power supply, and it says it right there as a matter of fact. And we've got a wiring diagram for the switch. You don't usually see that on power supplies. And this one's actually, it's, it's in good shape on the inside. There's no mouse pedals anywhere on this one. But I'm I'm leaning towards not saving this one. I'll I'll keep the power supply and stuff like that. But this is kind of a cheap and cheerful case, and that's not. I've already got one that looks like this. It's not really particularly attractive to me. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I maybe I'll save it. I don't know. I I do kind of hate to toss vintage stuff, but I don't have room for all of it. That's the problem. I have to be kind of picky about this stuff. This is the one with the K6200 in it. Cooler Master fan. It really doesn't look like it has a ton of time on it. You can see all the, the amount of traces that are on this thing. It's just incredible. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. All those traces on there. And imagine if just one of those got broke. Being for a lot of trouble on that. Again, the same TX Pro chipset. We got an onboard PCI Sound Pro right there. It's kind of interesting. That it's interesting for a uh, baby AT motherboard to have onboard audio of this era, but that is about when they started to do it anyway. So that's kind of interesting. And we got the little burn-in logo, 24 hour, on the BIOS chip. And this is a Cirrus Logic video card that's in here. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. Fifty-two forty-six, I think, is what that says, or fifty-four forty-six. But that's uh, it's not a bad. Let me get the flashlight here. I've got a flashlight right here. Let's just find out what is that for sure here. 54.46, yep, okay. So that's a, that's a decent card. Cirrus Logic cards are actually pretty good. Oh, that's a Nitro. Nitro 64V. So that's an STB card then. STB Nitro 64. That, I, that means that's the second one of those I've got. Uh, that's the card that I used for the... Uh, I believe it was the sockets. No, that's the one I've got in my Pentium 60 system. I might have used that in the um, Socket 7 face-off, too, that I did. We got a 3Com card in here. Pretty typical. Those are good cards. I like those. Those work pretty good, those PCI ones. And uh, not really much else. There's no uh, audio ports on the back. Probably, probably if I had to guess that bank of pins right there probably was the the game port and and headphone and 
microphone and line in probably. It was probably a cable that ran off of that. And you know, I had a back panel that fit in here with all the ports on it. And it was just never used. There's also another one up there. You can see the CD-ROM interface, the audio for the CD-ROM right there. That 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 bank of pins right there, that could be the audio outputs as well. In fact, that one that one could be the game port, and this one down here could be the rest of them. But uh, I don't know. But this one does work though. So uh, it claims to have 64 meg of RAM in it. There's three sticks of uh, SD RAM in here, so I would have to guess one is 32 and the other two are 16s. All wonderfully mismatched, different brands, different sizes. And this does have the ATX power connector too, so it's not too bad of a system. This one, this one would definitely be a great parts machine. Nothing else. But uh, so I think that'll do it for this video. I just wanted to kind of show you guys the stuff that I just got, and uh, let you see the way it is. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, a couple more fun things here to play with. One of the other vintage machi machines that I got was a was a giant gateway, um, and the FCC ID on the back of it says 486. Yeah, that's in the FCC ID, but what's in it is actually a K7 8, uh, 850 slot A processor, 800 or 850 something like that. Unfortunately, it doesn't boot, but uh, in that one, the processor was actually laying out of and just rattling around in the case and when I looked at the processor the pins had some uh, white corrosion on some of them and I tried to clean it and shove it back in but no go on that one so I don't know I haven't been able to get that system up and running but probably not a big deal it's probably only good for the uh, processor and the hard drives that are in it and the fan uh, the power supply as well I wish it still had the 46 motherboard in it. I really do, but it does have the top cover on it. Some of these had the sides missing on them, but it does have the top cover. But it was originally an AT style case, one of those tall gateway cases, and uh, the back end was cut out so it would accommodate an ATX motherboard. So I probably won't keep it if it was original I definitely would but it's a big case and I don't really need any more big cases but uh, yeah so anyway that's gonna conclude it for this video hope you guys enjoyed this a look at the past and uh, probably do a separate video on these again uh, actually trying to bring some life back to them so and uh, these end light cases, I really like these cases, so that's why I'm going to just clean this thing up and definitely going to keep this one because end light cases are kind of hard to come by nowadays. You know, it seemed like a lot of people used these cases back then, but they just don't seem to be around very much anymore. So uh, this one, this one's kind of a cheap and cheerful, flimsy kind of case. This was back when they started making really cheap cases as well. Yes, they made cheap cases back in the 90s too. But uh, it's held up well for itself over the years, so I can't really complain about it too much, I suppose. The uh, Western Digital SCSI drive. I do have plans to use this drive in an up-and-coming vintage computer build that I've got planned, but that won't come for probably another couple weeks because I still don't have all the components here yet. Yes, I bought some more components. You know, there's times when there's things that you really want, and no matter how much you find stuff just laying around in vintage computer mega halls and shops and stuff like that, you just don't find the exact components that you really want. So, but you know, this should be an interesting video. So I'm gonna end this video by powering up this machine for you guys. Uh, this is the uh, only one of the two that works, so you get to see at least what's on here anyway. Uh, this is a uh, PC chips board, and the indicator of that is uh, mainly, well, one of the things is, is that burn-in 24-hour sticker on there. I've seen that a lot of times on 
Amptron boards, which is also a brand that PC chips sold under, probably an OEM, you know, computer shop kind of generic board name. But uh, <clears throat> the TX Pro, that's a PC chips exclusive uh, naming scheme for chipsets, and it wasn't it was a chipset of their own. It was a rebadged chipset, in this case the ALI Aladdin 4 chipset. And PC chips did this on I pretty much, I think all of the chipsets back then, or a good majority of them anyway, depending if they were via ALI and uh, stuff like that. They just rebadged them and called them their own. So that's what we've got on this and the other one as well. So Alright, so here we go. K6 265 mega RAM 64 actually, but 65536. And we have free BSD on here, which makes me think with the SCSI drive, this is probably being used as a server of some sort. Let you hear that hard drive going at it here. It's running through some detection stuff right now. There we go. Gotta love the sound of those vintage hard drives. Sounds like popping popcorn in the microwave. It'll eventually get to a... Yeah, it's ready right now. Pretty close to it anyway. I think it's trying to connect to a, an update server possibly there. I'm not sure. I haven't looked that, I don't know, I've looked that IP address up. But I don't have the, I don't have either not hooked up to this, so it's never going to get out to the internet. You can see that connector is corroded pretty good, but even though, even with that, I can get it plugged back in, there you go. Still seems to send video to the monitor just fine so a little bit of cleanup on that will will help definitely not anything wrong with it other than just a little bit of rust so that'll conclude this video I'll probably do another video on the other case uh, gutting it out probably cleaning it up and uh, you know we'll show you how to clean up an old vintage computer I suppose since I keep getting uh, questions about that show how to clean the motherboard and stuff like that so anyway Take care, everyone. Peace out.